If you can secure a personal pension or stream of guaranteed income, even in a small amount that's meaningful to the client, it really is a game changer. Listen as this former annuity hater addresses common misconceptions around annuities and insurance and how she overcame them to implement these commission-free strategies successfully. You're listening to Advisor Revelations. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Advisors Revelation podcast with DPL Financial Partners. And today we're going to talk about some misconceptions around annuities, and there's lots of them. We're going to tackle a few today. This is Tim Rambowski. I'm the vice president of member success here at DPL. And joining me, we have a special guest so we can hear it straight from the advisor's mouth. Shannon Stone from Griffin Black. She's a lead advisor. Welcome to the show, Shannon. Thanks, Tim. It's good to be here. Yeah, great to have you. It's great to have you on for this segment revolving around misconceptions, because I think when you first started looking at annuities, would you describe yourself as a skeptic, bias against annuities? At what degree would you say kind of were your misconceptions pretty strong when you first looked at annuities? I think an accurate description would be an annuity hater. I'm definitely a former annuity hater. And when I think back to the early days, even before our relationship with DPL, there was no good reason to have one. And in fact, when a client would bring in this piece of paper, this statement saying, I have this, can you include it into my portfolio? It was like nails on a chalkboard because what do you do with this? We have no access to it. And you know, depending on the product, you didn't really understand how they work. So even in the infancy stage of our relationship with DPL, we thought it was a great resource to have for when clients did bring these in, because you guys could definitely break them down and give that information back to us in a way where we could begin to incorporate it into a client's plan. Yeah, I agree. And that's normally you know, how advisors begin to engage with us is first, kind of like what you were mentioning is, hey, we have clients with annuities. You know, We need somebody to help us get them out of it, right? And I know you guys use our annuity cost comparison tool on our website. We're able to dissect those and take a look. And those are out on our website, dplfp.com. There's the tool that we're talking about today to kind of dissect annuities. And I know your first interaction was kind of just with those investment-only variable annuities, which is most advisors, that's what they're used to. But I think as you kind of learned more about the structures and learned, you know, it's more than just low cost tax deferral, there can be other benefits. So I guess just walk us through kind of your your journey from kind of, you know, hey, annuity hater to, okay, we're okay with investment only VAs. But then you went from investment only VA over to, I want to learn about, you know, income and bond replacements. Just walk us through that journey briefly. Okay, Perfect. So in the beginning, definitely, you guys were a resource that we saw as an effective way to break down existing annuity contracts. And then as we began to develop our relationship more, we were able to bring to existing clients who had large investment-only variable annuities a lower cost reduction, which they loved. That you know, we were able to bring these ideas to them and, and show them ways over time that they could save money. And then at some point, you know, through many conversations and with the interest rate environment, just, you know, basically flat and at zero, we were looking for, you know, alternatives to bring into the overall asset allocation that could, you know, provide guaranteed income for life. And it was those conversations with clients around not necessarily around annuities, but guaranteed income that definitely opened up my eyes. Because the change is dramatic. When you begin to talk to clients around shifting from a total return portfolio, which you know is great for, for many clients, but not all. But for those who are really concerned and are expressing those anxieties around approaching retirement and through retirement and not sure that they're comfortable with a potential lumpy distribution. And then once we really brought it into the financial planning software, that's where I was really convinced, especially in a longevity scenario. The annuity conversation can address so many concerns for clients on so many levels, whether it's liquidity because it's going to provide them X amount of income every year that they can feel confident about. And then also that longevity risk, it provides that additional longevity risk. And depending on the type of product, you know, putting the client into or introducing them to what concept they feel most comfortable with, there are guardrails, 
there's increasing income, but there's, you know, overall what I found to be feeling that I was doing the right thing. And then I think I also had this time where I felt kind of bad about not being open to annuities before Mm -hmm. Um, as a fiduciary. You know, our job is to put our clients' best interest first. If I have someone across the table from me expressing concern and anxiety about market volatility and being in retirement and not being able to generate the income that they need, I mean, that's my job. It's what drives me to, to be here. I mean, it's what I'm most passionate about. So the annuity world has definitely opened up a world of possibility. It doesn't mean that it's for every client, but for those, you know, who are expressing, you know, certain concerns around retirement, there's always an opportunity, I think, to see if it fits and if it can enhance a client's picture. So I'm not as quick to unwind an annuity when a client brings one in as I used to be. And if there are good annuities that a client has come in with, then I get to figure out how to work with them. Yeah, it's interesting. The second ago, you were talking about if clients okay with a, a lumpy distribution strategy. And uh, I've read a number of articles over the last few weeks because obviously with bond returns being lower and you know guaranteed income sources disappearing, it seems like the 4% rule continues to change. It's coming down to like three, three and a half. You get Wade Fowl talking about it's two. And the other thing that I was reading too was that Kind of the strategy for most advisors over the next couple of years, because a lot of people are anticipating, you know, low market returns. They're basically telling their clients, hey, you might think about spending less over the next couple of years until we get through some of this. So it, it sounds like instead of having those conversations, a lot of times you're starting to maybe incorporate the annuity as opposed to talking about we should probably spend less or maybe four percent is not the right number for you. It sounds like you're using the annuity now to combat some of those conversations. Well, I think the annuity can definitely enhance the conversation. It doesn't necessarily... Well, and to your point, Tim, I think during times like this, these uncertain and, and highly volatile times, I think retirees, they automatically, I think, pull back on the spending. I mean, given mm-hmm. you know where we're at today with inflation, you know, insanely high, but the annuity can at least build that floor and give them that floor to have that confidence around, okay, so I don't need to turn to my portfolio for other spending maybe over the next year or two. I've just experienced with clients who have purchased annuities to build that floor. They're much more at ease with market volatility. And that doesn't take it all off the table. You know, over the last couple of years in the pandemic, I've seen some clients unwind large parts of their portfolio because they were coming unraveled. And those were the, I guess, the warning bells to me saying, there's got to be something more that we can do to build in certainty and confidence with clients, you know, approaching the red zone or in the red zone of retirement who are now concerned about, you know, whether they can retire or not at all. So no, this is a great conversation. Let's talk about uh, a couple of misconceptions for a minute here. So one that we've we've heard quite often, and I think it's a little easier to talk about today than it's been in the past, but one has been that my fixed income portfolio can outperform an annuity. So, you know, why would I use an annuity when my bond portfolio? Now, I mean, what's happened over the last, you know, six months is I think the ag is down, you know, 10% year to date. Here we are in June. Yeah. But let's just talk about it in Historical. So I don't want to just cherry pick just this time. Let's talk about that historically. You know, in your firm was a total return approach where it was investments only. So how did you go from that concept of like, hey, my bonds are going to outperform an annuity, but now we're talking about guaranteed income. So how did you kind of overcome that idea that it's not all just about performance, that guaranteed income should be included as part of kind of the, uh, you know, the characteristics of that investment type? Actually, you just kind of said it. When you take performance off the table, it's not about performance. For me, how do you weight into a portfolio certainty and confidence? Now, granted, I mean, annuities are safer than your traditional investment total return portfolio. But how do you weight that into an asset allocation where a client can turn to this portion? And we do include it as part of our fixed income allocation for those clients who own annuities. But it serves a different purpose. It's not there for performance, even though the payouts are increasing and tend to be higher than a bond portfolio. It serves a different purpose. And that's kind of where I go, you know, explain that to a client. It serves a different purpose than the rest of your portfolio, but it acts as a income stabilizer. Yeah, you're probably getting the majority of your performance from stocks anyways. 
So, you know, bonds are just kind of the, the safe portion. So, you know, as long as I guess the annuity, you're not losing money, right? You're probably doing okay. And I think with the annuities that are available today, a lot of even just the, the fixed account, the most simple choice is still around three, three and a half percent today. So you're yeah. really not giving up much in performance, even after fees and everything, right? Correct. And those annuities that are in place today over the last year are not down 10%. They um, are either up slightly, you know, depending on, you know, the contract year or they're flat for the year. But those clients who own them are feeling grateful that, you know, for this year, they're, you know, it's even versus a 10% loss like the rest of their portfolio. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. So this is something, you know, that you've incorporated in over the last few years. How have the client conversations been? So with those clients that actually did make the change where they went from an investment only approach, now they've had the annuity in place maybe for a year or two. How have those conversations been going with them, especially with all the market volatility? Does the conversation with the annuity client, is it different than the client that doesn't have the annuity? I would say yes, absolutely. So three cases come to mind actually, where they have specifically talked about, they're so grateful that they have the annuity. An ultra high net worth client who actually surprised me that when they made the decision to put the annuity into their portfolio, for all the reasons why someone that would want an annuity, because they want that idea of guaranteed income, clearly when they have enough other assets to self-fund whatever spending shock they may incur over the next 30 years of their lives. But he specifically said he feels so much more peace of mind of having this annuity, knowing that he has this guaranteed income in addition to his other sources, and that he can just not necessarily ignore his portfolio, but he's just so much less concerned with the outcomes while we're going through market volatility. And that was something that I introduced to him around at the beginning of the pandemic. And two years later, I just had a conversation with him not too long ago, and he's he can't thank me enough for bringing this concept to him. And he's so thankful for it. On the other side of that, I have another client who does not have enough to self-fund in the future. And she's still working, but often turns to you know the annuity where she knows that she's going to have X amount of dollars per year in addition to her social security. And it covers all of her spending. <laughs> and so then everything else that's invested in a total return portfolio, she you know, nobody likes to see their portfolio down. But as we all know, investing comes with ups and downs. But she feels more confident knowing that as you know, the last few years, because she's definitely in that retirement red zone, the more she can work and stretch it out, the better off she's going to be. But she feels much more confident knowing that she has this additional piece on top of Social Security to fund her expenses. Yeah, that confidence is huge, especially during yeah. these turbulent times, because I know part of it is just asking the client to, you know, stick to the course, stick to the plan, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. The more confidence you can give them that the plan is still working, even turbulent times, the better. Yeah. There's another client that comes to mind who recently retired, actually, at the beginning of the year. And I really feel for him. Mm-hmm. He is, you know, up at night, you know, riding the market waves and we're getting emails and calls and, I want to bring an annuity to him for consideration. And so we're working on that. It's just, it's painful. I think as fiduciaries, as planners, as being in the investment world, I think we love being with clients and watching them reach their goals. And this area of retirement can be so riddled with uncertainty. And it's hard to work your whole life, save, invest, To you know, hopefully maintain purchasing power throughout what's going to be your golden years, and to see clients not be able to sleep at night, or you know, because they're up in the middle of the night or worrying about their returns, am I going to run out of money? It's just such an interesting time around retirement. One thing you talked about was keeping up with purchasing power. So one other thing that I hear a lot of times that's a misconception is well annuities lose purchasing power over time because they don't keep up with inflation. So that's great that you can pay me X amount at 60, 65, but at 85, 90, that's not going to work. Now, I know one thing that you've learned about is these new generation of annuities that provide these ways of keeping up with inflation. So I don't need you to go through the mechanics of those, but how has that changed your outlook 
now that you know that annuities actually have the opportunity to, you know, grow and offset some of that inflation over time? There's no reason to not look at an annuity into a portfolio, a client's picture to see if it can enhance their overall outcome. And more times than not, I would assert that in a longevity scenario, that you'll have a better probability of success with an annuity versus without an annuity, because you do have that opportunity for increasing income over time. And it can definitely help the client. And while, while right now it may not be, you know, better than inflation, but over time and, you know, inflation, the historical norms, it absolutely can. And again, it's for clients who love the idea of guaranteed income. And I've yet to have one person say, no, I'm not interested in guaranteed income. It's not until you say the word annuity where it then becomes yeah. like, the term reverse mortgage. <laughs> so when you plug it into the financial planning software and when the client begins to understand the inner workings that it's not necessarily annuitization and there's an opportunity to have increasing income over time. I hate to sound so repetitive, but it is. It's a game changer in my opinion. Yeah. And I think you're right. I mean, the, the biggest thing is just run the numbers, right? Just run the numbers yeah. and see if they make sense. Because it's not that difficult. You know, there's the software and the plans in place now where you can easily punch this into a client's plan and, you know, see the results. So I think that's the biggest challenge is just, just test it out, right? There's one other misconception I want to hit before we wrap up today. So I know, like, for example, in your role at your firm, you know, you work with everything from, you know, an average client all the way up to ultra high net worth. I know we've talked about clients in excess of, you know, 50, $60 million before, and we've talked about, you know, average households. So, you know, one thing that we hear a lot of times is that, you know, my clients can self-insure. They don't want or need annuities. They have plenty of money. Um, annuities are only for, you know, the $500,000 client that's about to run out of money. And I know like, especially with a larger client, you were talking earlier about like, Hey, clients love guaranteed income until you mentioned the annuity word. So, you know, I guess tell us from your perspective, I mean, there's some reputational risk when you recommend an annuity to a client because it's like, they're going to recommend an annuity that can be, you know, it sounds so simple, right? We should have this fancy investment approach. So I guess tell us just a little bit about, you know, for somebody that thinks, hey, my clients are all high net worth. They don't want or need annuities. And I'm actually, I don't want to take an annuity to them because there's some reputational risk for me to do that. What would you say to somebody that kind of has that concept knowing that, you know, you've done this multiple times? I would say if your book, all your clients are ultra high net worth, I wouldn't count them out that they are not right for an annuity. This one particular client had an investable portfolio of over $10 million. And I too thought, I mean, they could, I mean, the numbers show they could self-insure for, you know, pretty much any spending shock in the future, but then hearing the client around the volatility. So had an experience five years prior with them around another incident. So we developed one strategy to kind of build up a short-term, short-term buckets for security, larger buckets. And then the pandemic hit. And the client was actually really concerned about retiring. And I thought, why? I mean, from everything from our perspective, you guys look great. You know, they're not hyper consumers. You can retire. (laughs) He was terrified of retiring. And so it was drilling down to all the whys. You know, why, 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 why? Because he was not convinced that they would not run out of money which is mind boggling to me, but everybody has their own relationship with money. And as we listen to our clients, they tell us exactly what's on their mind. They tell us what their fears are. And so I approached the conversation kind of with apprehension for all the reasons you just said, Tim, (laughs) Um, around, you know, you're bringing the $10 million client, the idea of an annuity. So I didn't use the word annuity, but I asked him around, you know, what if we could generate a stream of guaranteed income to cover not only your life, but you and your spouse's wife? And, you know, we had different ways to fund it and, and things. And and so then he says, he's like, you're talking about an annuity, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah. So over the course of a year, which is how long, you know, the multiple conversations took, he got into the illustration. We had great meetings around it. He kicked the tires, asked all the questions he wanted to. He understood that, yes, he was paying a fee 
for, you know, this guaranteed stream of income. And at the end of the day, he shared with me that he loved the idea of knowing that even after he's gone, that it will continue on for his wife and that the rest of his assets can grow. And it kind of quieted down that part of him that really does respond to market volatility Mm -hmm. because he is so interesting because his overall asset allocation, I think was like a 70% in stocks and 30% in bonds. So here he is in this kind of aggressive portfolio, tilted in an aggressive way, but was up at night concerned about market volatility. Not that he ever wanted to reduce the allocation because obviously we'd had that conversation plenty of times. But he's built around these guardrails or, you know, built the guardrails, if you will, to help protect for him to feel protected and confident around going into retirement. And now, you know, with the strategy for him to turn on the income when he becomes 72, he just he loves the strategy and he loves knowing that it's guaranteed for life, for both of their lives. So he's an example of someone that I never would have thought because of the ultra high net worth tag to bring. But he actually loves knowing that he has all of these pieces in place for his own yeah. confidence and certainty in retirement. That's a great example. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And you know, you're talking definitely about the psychological side, but you know, yeah. there's also math behind it all too, right? And that's where on our website at DPL we have our fixed income comparison tool that I would encourage everyone to hop out and take a look at because you can go in and just run the numbers and see if the math works. You know, there's definitely the you know psychological part of it, which we definitely have to consider with our clients. But just know from like a mathematics basis, if you just go out to that tool and type in your fixed income portfolio and evaluate that against an annuity, you know, you'll see these results that Shannon's talking about from a mathematical base, how it, you know, more efficient way of producing the income. So yeah, this is a great conversation, Shannon. Thank you so much for joining today. I know you've been a member with DPL for a long time and it's been a journey and we've come a long way from annuity hater to now you're recommending yeah. annuities to $10 million clients. So it's uh, fantastic. You know, that's why we call this advisor revelations because it sounds like you've had, you know, one of those huge revelations. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Absolutely. It's been, it definitely has been a journey and I've loved seeing how it's evolving how you guys are, you know, bringing more tools to advisors and really equipping us with a really valuable tool to be able to come and provide solutions to clients in a different way. Yeah. Perfect, Shannon. Well, thank you for being on the show today. And yeah, thanks. Appreciate the time today. Thanks. Great. And make sure you go to the website, dplfp.com, where you can see a number of other podcasts, just like these, where you can hear from other advisors, some of the situations they've gone through with misconceptions that they're handling and and hear those revelations. And also, if you have any questions on anything we've covered today, through the website, you can go to the contact page and actually schedule time with the DPL consultant to walk you through some of these live cases. So make sure you hop out there, schedule a time with one of our consultants, and we can walk you through some of the misconceptions that we handled today. So thanks everyone for listening today and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening. To hear more advisor revelations, go to dplfp.com and subscribe on your favorite podcast streaming app.